Welcome to the AutoStar Ignite software demo. This is the AutoStar Ignite homepage, and this homepage is a starting point for using the AutoStar Ignite software. On the left-hand side is the Activity Center. This gives you a list of the activities that are associated with the AutoStar software. So first thing we're going to do is add a vehicle into inventory. You simply select the Inventory tab underneath the Activity Center, and then select Add a Vehicle into Inventory. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in the VIN number of the vehicle and simply select a code VIN. What this does, it decodes the year, make, and model, and it'll validate that the vehicle information is correct in association with the VIN. We're going to put in the mileage of the vehicle. Let's say this vehicle has 68,000 miles. And we're going to select lot. This option is if you have multiple lots, selecting the lot that you're going to be selling this vehicle in. And next we're going to go into the Purchase Information tab. On the Purchase Information tab, it populates a date that it's purchased, that you purchased a vehicle, and we're going to put in the cost of the vehicle. Say you paid $4,000 for this vehicle. We're going to select the vendor, and we're going to select the buyer. Next we're going to go into the Cost and Expenses tab. This is the tab in which you could go ahead and put in the uh, expenses that you put into the vehicle before you put it for sale. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that we purchased new tires for this vehicle and the tires cost us $400 and the name of the vendor was Goodyear. And we're going to put in the invoice number and select OK. And notice underneath the vehicle cost and expense summary it gives you the cost of the vehicle and the expense for the new tires giving you a total cost of $4,400. The next tab is your miscellaneous tab. On this tab, this is where you put in what the uh, selling price is going to be for the vehicle. So we're going to go into the asking price, and we're going to say that we're going to sell this vehicle for $8,000. And the required down for this vehicle is $1,000. And then, on the registration information, this is where you can populate the uh, vehicle registration information and the title information. And on the image tab, this is where you could upload a picture of the vehicle. So what we're going to do is we're going to select Save and Close. And once we select Save and Close, it's going to populate a stock number for this vehicle. And now it saves it onto the system. And what we're going to do next is sell this vehicle. You simply select the Sales tab and then Sell a Vehicle. And then just simply put in the stock number. And notice how it populates the vehicle information. And next what we're going to do is select a Customer tab. And on this Customer tab you have the option of selecting a customer that's already been in the system or adding a new customer. In this instance we're going to add a new customer. So we're going to go ahead and put in his first name. Let's say his name is Ken. And let's say that his last name is Davidson. I'm going to put in his Social Security information, driver's license information, home phone number, and we're going to select OK. And then this gives you the customer information. And what we're going to do is select the state that his driver's license was issued in. Let's say it's Texas and his date of birth. I'm going to say that he was born on September 9th, 1982. And then the next tab is the address tab and we're going to put in the street address. And we're simply going to tab down to the zip code. And notice, once you input in the zip code, it's going to automatically populate the city, state, and county information. And the next tab is going to be your contact page. This is where you could put in the home phone number, work phone number, and also the name of the employer. Let's say he works for Lowe's and you simply select OK. And the next tabs, this is where you could populate any additional co-buyer information. You could put in a co-signer and also add in references. On the insurance lien tab, this is where you could put in the insurance information that's required in order for uh, the customer to purchase a vehicle. On the next tab, which is your F&I tab, this gives you the pricing information of the vehicle 
what is it that you're selling it for. You could also put in if there's a trading amount and also your warranty information and notice how it's automatically populated your total fees, your title fee, your license fee, and your inspection fee and also how it's populated your tax information. Also has the amount down and this pickups tab, this is where you could put in if the customer is going to make partial payments towards the down payments. You also have your amortization method. You have different options as far as selecting what amortization method you're going to choose for this deal. The interest rate is already defaulted, but you have the ability of populating the interest rate for what it is that you want to structure the deal for, and also the payment frequency. You can select if it's weekly, bi-weekly, semi-monthly, or monthly. And notice how it's set up right now bi-weekly and the number of payments and what the total of the payments is going to be. Next tab is your washout tab. Over here you notice what the gross profit is of the vehicle. If you have any back-end profit, let's say if you had any uh, warranty associated with the purchase, and uh, if you were selling gap with the purchase. And on the profit summary this gives you the net profit and you could also edit the commissions tab if you're going to be paying your salesperson a commission on the sale. So what we're going to do is we're going to save this as a sale and it's going to populate the payment code and you can select if the customer is paying cash, credit or check for the down payment. You simply select save and you select OK. And now what it's going to do, it's going to populate the forms. What we do is we actually have set up a document package and we're simply going to select the buy here, pay here in-house deal and this is going to automatically populate the documents that are going to be associated with the purchase of this vehicle. Simply select OK and it'll even populate uh, warranty information if you sold the warranty with this purchase. Notice how it prints out the application for title, the certificate of title, your buyer's guide, and your retail installment contract. Now we're going to close and we're going to post this as a receivable. we're going to go into how to take a payment. Underneath the activity center you're going to select receivables, cash receipts, take a payment and we're going to put in that contract number. And notice how it's populated the customer information. On the account information tab it gives you the total balance of the vehicle and when is the next due date of the payment. So next we're going to go into the process payment tab. Underneath the gross receipts we're going to put in the total that the customer is going to pay. Payment type, we're going to select cash. And then the amount paid, we're going to put in the 129.91 and we're going to select save payment. And we're going to continue on this contract and we're going to go back to the account information tab and notice how it's automatically populated the payment and posted it onto its account. So we're going to hit close and on the term settlement tab this is where you could go in and put in the customer information and if you wanted to process a early payoff if the customer wanted to pay for his vehicle earlier. Next what we're going to do is we're going to go into the standard reports tab and in the standard reports tab you have the ability to generate over 130 reports in the software. What we're going to do is we're going to go into the receivable reports and select delinquent contracts and we're going to go ahead and take a look and see how many customers are um, late right now. What this does, it generates a detailed report on the customer name, address, and information, what their payment amount is, what the total balance is, and what the past due amount is. It's a very important report because this is the report that you could use as a tool to see who's late on their payments, and also as well use it for your collections process. 
The next report that we're going to look at is the balance aging report. Now in the balance aging report, what this report is going to do is it's going to determine all the delinquencies in your portfolios. Notice how it's set up under customer information, the customer name, and also how many customers are past due 31 to 60 days late, the total amount that it's due, and also on the bottom you notice this is the balance on your entire portfolio, how many accounts you have, and also the percentage of the accounts, and what the balance is on each contract.